Hello and welcome to Progressive Education Society's Modern College of Pharmacy, Nigri Pune. I said Dr. Bhushan Pimple. In this video, we will discuss about the determination of mean diameter of starch grains as well as determination of size of calcium oxalate crystals. Before moving on to the detailed practical, we'll just have the brief introduction as to why this practical is important and what it is basically. This kind of practicals wherein uh, we are uh, measuring the size of microscopic objects is called as micrometry because the objects are microscopic and we are using a scale even that is microscopic. With the help of this scale, we are de determining either the mean diameter or length or width. The importance of this practical is in authentication of raw material. That means to determine whether the raw material provided to us is pure or has it been adulterated by some material. To determine the impurity profiling, impurity profiling in sense in the raw material due to the presence of certain impurities uh, under the microscope these impurities can be easily visible and can easily be distinguishable, distinguishable uh, as compared to the authentic crude drug. It also helps us to determine the type of raw material. Now let us take an example of starch. Starch is present in almost all the plants. And commercially, uh, starch is required uh, for various purposes like uh, as a binding agent, as a disintegrating agent, as a sweat absorbent in uh, our surgical gloves, or as a bulk forming agent in certain tablets or capsules and gliding agent. And there are in numerous applications of it. Now, there's commercially, there are four kinds of starch normally used like maize starch, rice starch, wheat and potato starch. So now if you have ordered for rice starch and by chance if the supplier has provided you potato starch under the microscope with the help of micrometry you will be able to distinguish between them. Now remember students in this uh, case you cannot make use of iodine test because both the starches will test positive for iodine. This is the only test or this is the only method to distinguish between the different types of starches. It also helps us to determine the uh, whether our formulation is complete or not. Like so suppose a micro formulation, there are numerous micro formulations like micro capsules, micro emulsions or micro crystals and so on. So now once you have done with, uh, you are done with the formulation, you need to check whether our formulation is really in that size range or not. For that we need to determine with the, the, their size with the help of micrometry. Also there are few more applications but these are uh, the major applications as far as a pharmacy or pharmacy graduate are concerned. We will be uh, focusing ourselves with these kind of applications. Now how to go for how, how to proceed for this experiment. The first and the foremost thing is uh, the materials that we require. Normally we require sample material like say for example starch or our prepared formulation or calcium oxalate crystals whatever the sample is it you can choose any of the sample. Equipment. The major equipment required for this is microscope then a stage micrometer. Now stage micrometer is a simple slide. Now this slide has uh, a circle at the center as you can see here and this circle has been etched with a microscopic scale. This is a scale. I will be showing you the scale with a zoomed view in the next slides. So this kind of a slide microscopic slide with an etched scale on it uh, is called as stage micrometer. And the least count of this st uh, stage micrometer is 0.01 mm. That means if you consider the distance between two consecutive lines, two immediate neighboring lines, the distance will be 
0.01 so that is called as the least count another equipment we require for this is the eyepiece micrometer now eyepiece micrometer is very similar to our normal eyepiece but it has been fitted with one more lens or one more scale and you can see here the scale this is also a scale and it has been etched with one, 0 to 100 markings on it and you can find the numbers on this now how will you differentiate between a stage micrometer and an eyepiece microscope uh, eyepiece micrometer under the microscope is that the, the stage micrometer does not have any numbers etched on it just lines are etched but there are no number like 0 10 20 are absent on this scale whereas 0 10 20 everything is present on this scale further you can rotate this ocular microscope or eyepiece micrometer that means when you rotate the eyepiece the scale will also move you can place it horizontally vertically slightly tilted depending upon the particle to be measured now we'll have a look at the calibration uh, in the previous experiments we you all might be aware about the cal calibration method but still if we, you are unable to understand from the previous um, videos we will discuss here the calibration in brief <coughs> now see this is the stage micrometer this is the zoomed view of stage micrometer you can see notice here that there are no numbers etched on it only lines now you can see uh, the stage micrometer the entire length of the stage micrometer that is starting from this point to the last point is 1 mm the entire length is 1 mm and uh, it has 100 divisions in it so one entire mm has been divided into 100 divisions so you can count the distance between the two consecutive or two successive lines is called as a single division. So if one mm has 100 divisions, one division will correspond to one mm divided by 100 that is 0.01 mm. So the distance between these two successive line that is the one long, long line and the shortest line is 0.01 mm. So this is what the stage micrometer will look under the microscope. Now the upper scale is called as an eyepiece micrometer. Here you can notice the presence of certain numbers etched on it 0, 10, 20, 30. So with the help, with the help of these numbers you can distinguish between the stage and the uh, eyepiece micrometer. The problem with the eyepiece micrometer is that uh, this eyepiece micrometer according to the user according to the microscope the focal length of the eyepiece micrometer can be sometimes above or below or you can say more or less that means a person with unaided eye or without any uh, with a normal eye vision he, he has some so suppose a length focal length or he has adjusted the coarse adjustment knob and fine adjustment knob and seen the stage micrometer but if a, another person with some spectacles or some um, numbers or to his vision like plus or minus he he, he might in uh, change the uh, course no adjustment knob either in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to adjust the view so from person to person the view varies now that is the major reason why we need to calibrate this eyepiece micrometer eyepiece micrometer cannot be at the same distance uh, or the focal distance cannot be the same for all the microscope or for all the users therefore we need to calibrate the eyepiece micrometer with the help of stage micrometer stage micrometer will be at the constant position and this this Met, uh, uh, scale is used to calibrate the eyepiece now we'll see how it is calibrated you need to move the um, knobs on the stage in order to adjust the slide 
so you can uh, you have to uh, adjust it in such a way that it overlaps upon the eyepiece micrometer now the view will be somewhat like this you can <coughs> arrange the two uh, scales uh, coinciding or superimposing upon one another now we will our first job is to superimpose the first two lines like the zeroth line of the eyepiece micrometer and the zeroth line of the stage micrometer we have made them superimpose upon each other now our next job is to check which is the next consecutive or next immediate line that is getting superimposed we just have a look see you some can find that the second line of this stage micrometer can coincide with the third line or is coinciding with the third line of eyepiece micrometer further you can see here the fourth line of stage micrometer is getting coincided with sixth line of eyepiece micrometer also you can notice here this that is the sixth line of the stage micrometer is getting coincided with ninth line of the stage uh, eyepiece micrometer but in these conditions the best way is to choose the immediate next line now immediate next line means this we have purposefully uh, purposely or we have manually coincided what is the next immediate line this is the next immediate line that is the reason why we need to skip these two lines or we should not consider these two line instead try to consider this line so these we will skip and this is the uh, line that we will take in consideration for calibration or calculation that means <coughs> two divisions of stage micrometer are equivalent to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer see this this is the second division of stage micrometer one this is the first and this is second now similarly here this is first line second line and third line that means third division so two stage uh, divisions of stage micrometer are equivalent to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer therefore or what we know is you can read here this the length of one division of stage micrometer is 0.01 mm this is the least count therefore two divisions of stage micrometer will correspond to or will be equal to 0.02 mm one division is of 0.01 mm therefore two divisions will be of 0.02 mm <coughs> therefore this two these two divisions or 0.02 mm will be equal to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer because two divisions of stage are equal to 0.02 therefore two division uh, 0.02 mm will be equal to these three divisions of eyepiece micrometer now to determine the distance between one division of eyepiece micrometer we will we will need to that uh, divide this 0.02 by the three three divisions therefore 0.02 divided by 3 will be equal to 0.0067 so now what is this this is the correction factor or you can say one the distance between one division of eyepiece micrometer and this microscope was found to be 0.067 so now this this 0.067 is the least count between the zeroth line and the first line of the eyepiece micrometer this is how we need to calibrate the eyepiece micrometer we will see how it can be useful for determining the mean diameter or suppose this is the stage and the eyepiece micrometer and this was our calibration <coughs> but in the next experiment or uh, hence forward uh, we need to skip the stage micrometer slide we need to take it out because we have to place the slide with starch or some other material or loaded over it so we are going to take out the stage micrometer and replace it with the slide of the starch grains so what we know from the previous slide is one division of eyepiece micrometer is equal to 0.067 mm so suppose this is one starch grain okay 
So just have a look at the mean diameter. That means the diameter if we consider for this oval, it ranges from 10th line and it crosses up to 23rd line. You can consider this 23rd line. 10 to 23 means 13 divisions. So if you see this red droplet, it has 13 divisions of eyepiece micrometer. And what is the single division of eyepiece micrometer corresponding to is 0 0.06067. So therefore, we will be multiplying this correction factor with 13 divisions for this droplet. So 13 into 0 0.067 will be 0 0.0871. This is the diameter of this particular starch grain or red droplet, whatever we see. We will take another example. Suppose you are dealing with calcium oxalate crystals. So now in that case, uh, this calcium oxalate crystal, uh, suppose this is the calcium oxalate crystal, it the size ranges from 60 to, it is somewhere around 75, 76, 77 and 78. So 60 to 78 means 18 divisions. So blue rod of the what we have taken in this condition blue rod has 18 divisions of eyepiece micrometer this is the length of it so 18 multiplied by the same correction factor will be 0 0.1206 mm so this is how you need to count the uh, microscopic objects and determine either their mean diameter or their length or you can also uh, shift or you can move the eyepiece micrometer in such a way that this eyepiece micrometer can be rotated so you can place it upright or in the horizontal or sorry vertical direction and even you can count the, the, the width of this or you can count this diameter of the starch grain or the red droplet see this is the way how the starch grains appear under microscope now this is the particular rice grain then um, uh, this is a uh, maize grain uh, sorry sorry this is wheat wheat grain wheat starch grain and this is maize starch grain maize can be easily identified by the presence of mercedes like logo or in it or you can say uh, star shaped hilum present at the center so this is maize and the large uh, muscles like uh, muscle like shape muscle shaped uh, starch grains with some striations over it this is the typical characteristic of potato starch so the smallest are rice grain starch and the largest are the potato starch as far as uh, this uh, calcium oxalate crystals are concerned the calcium oxalate crystals uh, appear in this way suppose these are monoclinic calcium oxalate crystal or acicular uh, calcium oxalate crystal whereas this is a star shaped calcium oxalate crystal you can determine the diameter here you can determine the length and these are sometimes um, tetrahedral or polygonal shape of calcium oxalate crystals so you can even determine the size of these calcium oxalate crystals now how to determine the size of these if you find so many starch grains what to do with this shall we count each and every starch grains no just count minimum 50 starch grains or 50 calcium oxalate crystals or 50 objects under the study and write the divisions of ips for each let's suppose the first starch grain measured 8 division of ips second measured 10 13, uh, third measure 13, then fourth was of 6 eyepiece. I am talking about eyepiece micrometer. Just keep on writing all the eyepiece micrometer divisions required to the, uh, required for the length or the diameter of the starch grain. So you need to uh, take 1 to 50 starch grains and then at the end make an average of all the divisions of eyepiece micrometer. Suppose in this case, if you got get 8 as the average. Uh, 8 is the 8 divisions of eyepiece micrometer. Now what to do with this? 8 is multiply this 8 that is the average with the correction factor. Remember the correction factor 0 0.0067. So just 8 multiplied by 0 
gives 0.0536. This is the uh, mean diameter of the star. There is no need for you to continuously multiply this 8, this 10, this 13, this 6 with the correction factor. You can just take the average and then at the end you multiply with the correction factor. So what is the mean diameter? You can write in the result like a mean diameter or length or width of the given sample was found to be so and so. So this is how we proceed for the determination of mean diameter of starch or determination of length or width of either fibers or calcium oxalate crystals. Hope you have uh, understood this kind of uh, determination that is micrometric.